somewhere in the past you've put two dollars down on your favorite horse, or maybe some prefer dog racing. Me, I'm a snail man myself. Ooh, the excitement. Well, have you ever heard of goat racing? <laughs> That's right, goat racing. It's not very popular here in the United States, but around the world, ooh, big draw. They don't actually sit on the goats. Here in Camboin, they use little carts. Ooh, trotters, they're not. And in Tobago, they actually chase them down the field. Some believe it has to do with initiation rites, such as the Masons or Shriners. In order to pass mustard, you had to be able to ride the goat, so to speak. But I digress. The expression has nothing to do with actually goat racing or fraternal initiations. It's an old Cheyenne expression having to do with the breadwinners of the family and basically asking the woman if she's still married. Whew, I bet you that's good news for the goats. <laughs> I've seen some pretty interesting hairstyles and techniques in my time. I mean, women have been putting their hair up in hot rollers for decades. But putting a hot iron on your head? Ah! Seems a little extreme to me. It's an old Turkish, Armenian expression, which means, stop annoying me. I guess it would be the Western equivalent of Get out of my hair! But what that has to do with ironing? Well, I don't know. Beats me. Well, since we're on the topic of letting off a little steam... It's an old Chinese expression relating to how one handles anger. Now you dog blasted ornery no account long eared barm. Uh huh, uh huh. Cut it out! Uh huh. And the seven orifices the Chinese philosophy refers to. And when you get right down to it, I can think of nine, but I guess that's another idiom. In keeping with the oriental flavor, <coughs> pun intended, there comes this oldie but goodie. Don't hang noodles from my ears. Come on now, why would you want to wear spaghetti? I mean, unless you were involved in a comedy routine, or you had an accident. Wearing spaghetti is not very fashionable or practical. We have to admit we've all had a love affair with noodles since we were kids. Some of us never grow out of it. But one has to admit they're tough to eat much less wear. They don't stay on the fork even if you twirl the bejesus out of them. Only the masochistic among us find it challenging to try chopsticks. Some master the technique, some don't. But wearing them's a whole different bowl of noodles. It's an old Russian expression equivalent to don't BS me, or as they would say it, don't hang noodles from my ears. Uh, in retrospect, I may have been wrong about noodles as a fashion statement. <sighs> if only I had some meatballs. Enough to cobble dogs with. This is an expression from our friends across the pond in England. It basically is the Western equivalent to
to. He's got so much blank. Like Carter has liver pills. And if you're not familiar with Carter, Samuel Carter, back in 1868, formulated a concoction, which was basically a laxative, and he touted them to cure everything from eyesight to malaria, and he made a lot of them. Over in England, a cobbler, as you know, is a person who makes shoes. And if you have so much leather that you could outfit your four-legged animal friends with it, well, you're doing pretty well. Hey, just ask Elsie. And last but not least, having a cat's arse. For example, we like to invite Bob to go have a drink, but his wife would have a cat's arse if she found out about it. This one's pretty literal. It means that if a woman gets so mad, her face contorts and her lips pucker, and she looks just like the back end of a cat. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, I can see this, yeah. Well, some do, and some don't. Ah! Oh, I bet she's been the butt of many a joke. I shit you not.